Hello it's and welcome to the studio where we beat the real stress of everyday life. Who join me today in this so warm, sunny brush, studio? We're going to be painting on this dirty looking canvas. <laughs> it's a ground. I put a ground on there. I'll tell you why in a minute. Let's have a look at the palette because I got some fantastic paints here. I've got ultramarine blue, cerulean blue. I got a, a red a burnt umber, a white and a black. Now, the reason I'm excited today is because I've been contacted by a company called Arteza and they've sent me these fantastic paints along and they come in a box of 60 colours and all the colours you can imagine actually and um, even, even my favourite Indian yellow is in there. Um, they were kind enough to send me um, a box of the their products and as I said, I'm going to be reviewing those today. But... Um, they come in these little packages look look at this fast fantastic they're all in all in sequence and not only that they stack up really well as well and um i quite like the way they they actually produce these colors now artis are kind enough to um offer me a small commission so if you do use the link below and pop along and try some of their products the, the website is there there's two websites there's arteza.com which is us based and arteza.co.uk which is a uk based now the uk based hasn't got all the products on there at the moment but they are adding more every single week so it's worth checking them out it really is and price wise they're okay they're reasonable um but the vast range of colors that we've got the only problem i've got with these colors is they're only small tubes and I use quite a lot of paint. But I mean, if you're starting out and you want a vast range of colours and you want to practice, these are the ones to go. Now, I don't know. Proof is in the pudding or in the painting. So as I say that, let's get to the canvas because I've waffled it off. So anyway, thank you, arteza.com, arteza.co.uk. And we will let you know how we get on with these colours. So as I said, I'm working on a 14 by 12 canvas today and... Um, I put a ground on there. I thought we'd do something um, something that we can use these colours on, obviously. Um, anyway, without, without the waffle, let's get a brush. Now, um, I haven't got... They sell brushes as well, but I quite like using um, the brushes I'm used to at the moment because I didn't get any brushes, unfortunately. And I thought um, what I would do is just use plain old boiled, cooled tap water and nothing else because we want to know how good this paint is and um, never tried painting with this before so it's going to be an experience for me as well so what I'm going to do is pick up a bit of cerulean blue I'm going to pick up a little bit of ultramarine blue and so far that paint looks quite nice I'm going to pick up a little bit of white on my brush so I got three colors on there I've got white cerulean blue and ultramarine blue that should give me a sky that I'm looking for and I'm just going to paint that in and we'll see how nice that goes actually i'm quite impressed because it is covering really well um you need to do a transparency test on these colors if you do pop along um, and buy them and um, what i suggest you do is get a bit of card or um, an old canvas and get some um get a um, a permanent marker or something and put three little lines like that three little lines like that in permanent marker in black and and then paint over these three lines with the color and and if you see those three lines through it then you know it's transparent or semi-transparent or opaque so there's a little test and I, you can use that method on, on on any any paint in fact so it's quite warm in the studio um it's starting to dry a little bit so we pick up some more cerulean blue a little bit more ultramarine blue a little bit of white just to get this sky in place and I'm just going to play around with that. I'm using the paint neat. I haven't added any water to it. Um, so far, so good. I'm quite impressed, actually. Um, now, they, they do sell other quantities of paint uh, on the website. Um, the websites are below, as I said. The UK one hasn't got all the products. Uh, it's the, the, the US one. But um, give them a shot and see, see, see if there's anything they would like to try. And if you use that... Um, code that i've given below obviously i'll get a small commission for that which is quite nice of them to do that for me um and it's always nice to have free paint anyway and i'm always up, up for looking for different products now 
there we are that's that's quite a nice sky I, I quite like it. I'm gonna pick up a little bit of moisture and picking up a little bit more white because I just want to lighten down this sky just a touch there I'm only painting skies just blend you'll get used to the paint what I'm saying is you're going to get used to the paint you're going to get used to the feel of the paint no matter what paint you use um, if you use it a lot and you're using one product uh, this is why I like to try and keep to one product if I can if I'm working especially on my commissions and stuff if you just keep to one product you get to know what that product can do you get to know it's how long it takes to dry how 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 you can blend with it um, what colors are transparent what are opaque because different companies got different colors and they're all different opacities so bear that in mind that's important bear that in mind so we're just adding a little bit of color to this sky there you go bringing this in And so far, so good. I'm, I'm, I'm quite impressed. I'm quite impressed with this. So I'm going to get a little bit of ultramarine blue on my brush, a little bit of fluid, a little bit of uh, white. I'm just going to put that by there, I think. I just want to lighten this down to a, a point that I want. And then I'm going to add a little bit of burnt umber to it. There we are. So we've got a, a dirty... A dirty blue colour. There you go. You can see that my wet palette is drying out already. Surprising. I'm just going to put in some of that colour there now to act like shadows for a, a cloud formation that I want to do. Because I'm thinking um, the image I got that I'm working from, which is from a royalty-free site, by the way. Um, links are all below. So I'm, I'm working from an image because it's, it's, it's easier to do that um, when, when doing a review like this because I don't have to think too much because I want to concentrate on this paint. I want to get to know the paint. And getting to know the product, as I said, helps you immensely. It really does. So I'm just putting in some of this dirty looking colour. And it'll all, it'll all work because we just put in the under colour of this cloud formation in. And I, I wanted to do it this way because I want to get the feel of the paint. And you keep you near me saying I need to feel the paint. And that is important. I've had a, a comment, um, a couple of comments in fact. I'm going to have to re-wet my palette in a second. Um, I've had a couple of comments saying that um, you know you seem to blend your paints well and we, we I struggle and um, this particular person said I'm struggling with blending is it's getting to know the drying times as well I think it's not just it's not just about knowing how the paint flows it's, it's getting to know the drying time as well there you go So I'm happy with that so far. What I'm going to do now is just going to lift my, my, my this is grease proof, grease proof paper by the way, or parchment paper, uh, and I got some kitchen paper or kitchen roll, uh, the stuff you, do you uh, use in the kitchen, kitchen paper, and I need to re-wet that and stick this back down. So I'm just going to do that. So I'm just going to have to pause the video a second. Okay, I've done that. Um, what? So what people don't realize is a wet palette only only works when it's wet it doesn't work when it's dry and again i've had a couple of people say that um the paper's moving about is too dry well you need to you need to wet it basically um, make sure that the underneath is wet and this parchment paper or baking paper or greaseproof paper whatever you call it in your country um is stick sticks to it if not wet it a little bit give it a scrunch put it back down then put your paints on there and you'll find that your paints will stay um wetter for longer okay so we're going to get some burnt umber i'm going to add a little bit of white to that i want to lighten this down because i'm thinking of um mountains and things like this there we go so i need to i need to blue that off a little bit i'm going to get a cerulean blue to it 
I, I get it really late. A little bit of ultramarine blue to it. Let's see what happens. I just need to cool this off. Getting a colour that I'm happy with. And I'm just going to look at this. Put a test. Yeah, that's fine. I can work with that. So, this mountain scape, uh, in, it reminds me of um, Snowdonia in, in, in Wales. Um, and I thought that would be a nice thing to try and paint. So, we'll just put that in. This is very distant, this mountain. Very, very, very distant in the background there. And this is something you can try. And I'm sure you can do it. I'm still waiting for this to dry. You can still see parts of it are still a little bit wet. So I'm quite impressed. I am really impressed with this paint. And I'm not just saying that because it was sent to me for free. And I've got to do a review. I'm, I'm, I'm an honest chap. And I will tell you as things are. And if I'm, if I'm not happy with something, that is something I will say. Um, and anybody that follows me knows that, you know, I, you don't gain nothing by lying, do you? You don't. You don't gain nothing. You just lose trust. And um, if if there's something I don't like, then that's what exactly what I'm going to say. But as far as the paint is concerned, I'm happy. Now, as far as the quantity is concerned, hmm, it's okay. The the um, the box um, is quite a nice box. There's six sixty acrylic colours in there, and there's there twenty two mils or 0.74 US fluid ounces. So is it is it enough paint? Well, it is for the amount of paint and color range that you've got there in those 60 tubes. You've got a bit of everything and you've got the flexibility of going on to the website and ordering more of one particular color. But as a starter kit, I think it's really good. So far, let's try this. Now, the proof in the pudding as they say, is um, I think we need to find uh, my, my, my little cloud brush because I haven't painted clouds for a long time and I got a little filbert brush there that it's, that has, that has done so many clouds, more cloud, look, it's even, it's, it's even loose, so I've got to fix that. But um, I'm just going to get some plain white. Now this is a proof in the pudding. I want to see how this white performs in this particular way. I'm going to get a little bit of this under colour, cloud under colour to it. So I'm just going to darken that off a touch. Stain the white paint look with this. So it's not a brilliant white. And then, I'm, I haven't put a lot of paint on my brush. I'm going to look at this cloud formation and I'm going to scrub in. And this is a dry brushing technique, so this is another good test for this type of paint. It's how it dry brushes as well, how it, how it reacts to the canvas. This is, uh, this is not an Arteza canvas, um, because as I said, I was just sent out some paints, so I've had to use an old canvas, but um, most of them are all basically the same type of thing. As far as canvases are concerned, you get what you pay for. If you want to spend money on a proper cotton or linen canvas, then you can. But in my experience for for learning and for beginners, then um, the, the, the cheaper canvases can, can work really well. And um, most of these canvases are not, they're not cotton based, um, they're gauze based. And they put gauze on there, they stick it down and they, they put a primer on it. And that's basically all they are. But I, I am aware that there are better quality canvases out there. And as far as RTs are concerned, I can't I can't talk for them because I don't know. I have absolutely no idea what their canvas panels are, but I'm I'm hoping if this video works well and um, I get a little bit of response and some of you try their products and I'll get a little bit of commission that maybe they'll send me out some more products again in the future and I'm hoping I'll uh, be able to review some canvases. Who knows? I've got a couple of other little um, products, hopefully. 
um, which I can look at. I'm just waiting for a delivery on them, but I thought I'd get the paints one done first, and then we'll go from there. So I'm just scrubbing in, getting some shapes into this. This is a big, big cloud. I don't know what they call this formation a cloud. There's a name for it. I can't remember. I've seen one the other day, actually, when I was walking Molly down the park, and I thought, oh, i got to stop and take a picture of that. Any opportunity you can to take a picture of a cloud formation, do it because you'll never see that cloud formation ever again in your life. They're unique. They're totally, absolutely, 100% unique. You'll never see them again. Not in that shape. Seen one on Facebook um, the other day. They looked like a human face, which was which is phenomenal. I'm just going to go over that. Mountain range a little bit with a little bit of dry brush to make it look as if there's a little bit of underlining mist flying around. I can see very, very little, very, very little paint. Very, very little paint for this, this technique. A dry brush. Just want to get those clouds to fluff up. It's a good experiment as well. Good practice for you. If you've never painted clouds before, have a go. And I know I've got great I got the greatest respect for everybody that tries to paint. I really have. I was talking to a lady, I mean I went to Tembi the other week and um I was talking to an artist there and um if anybody goes to Tembi if anybody's been, been to Tembe, West Wales, then um, it's just opposite the Lifeboat pub. Just down by there it is. And there's a bookshop there. And there's a little artist. Um, and I forget her name now. She's a lovely lady. There's an artist there. She's got a gallery there. And, and she's, she does some fantastic works. And um, I was talking to her the other day. And she was saying that um, her friend unfortunately had a stroke and he was an artist and he's lost the mojo to paint and we all do that so at some point we all we all lose our mojo sometimes we it, uh, we all get that little painter's block and stuff whether it's through illness whether it's through stress or whether it's just through the ability not to be able to do it anymore and i don't know why but every every artist suffers this what you've really got to do, if you don't feel like painting, pick up a colouring book or a pencil and do a little bit of drawing or something. It's important that you, that you do that. There we are. So we're building up the clouds formation there. And now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a little bit of blue. I'm just going to get a little bit of this ultramarine blue. There, a touch of water. I don't want too much water because I want this to be a dry brush. Taking a little bit off my brush like that. I want to try and get a little bit of warmth, a little bit of blue into this sky. Oh, that's drying off again, that paper. So it shows you really how warm it is in the studio. Just going to get a bit of blue into this cloud. You don't need loads of paint. You don't need loads of paint. Don't 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 think that you have to have tremendous amounts of paint on a canvas sometimes if you want to if you want to paint like this and i've said before painting is, is is to be viewed from a distance you don't need to be thickly painted unless that's your thing if you want to do that and you can but i try to work in nice thin layers to get that impressionistic type of look that i and i want from these things so we've got a little bit of color there let's just put a little bit of blue in there there we go and we come back to that again so you can just about see those mountains there they'll stand out a little bit more now when i put the next layer in place again i'm going back to my little short flat that we put the mountain in place in the first place too many places <laughs> i'm gonna get some burnt number back there and we want to lighten that up just, just a touch. Get a bit of black this time. 
Oh, that was a quite a strong black, in fact. I'm quite impressed with that one. There you go. I quite like the colours and the intensity and the strength of these colours. Um, I really do. And let's try that against there. Yeah, we got a we got a nice little contrast. And then just if you haven't got a photograph or a reference to go to, don't worry. Just just try and make up some mountain range patterns like that. There we are, just play same on that that. Just create an illusion of depth as we come in towards ourselves, we get in slightly darker and darker and darker. And don't rush your painting. If you want to stop and have a break, then have a break. There's there's no laws to say that you've got to do things in certain time scales and stuff like that. Absolutely none whatsoever. Art is uh, art is to be enjoyed. It really is. So quite lucky to live. Um, I would say within an hour and a half of the west coast of Wales, and and I think a half an hour and a half to people in America, they b must be laughing because they think just, just some of them, some of you just pop down the shops <laughs> or the stores in an hour and a half. But an hour and a half to us in Wales is, is, is quite a long way away. <laughs> it really is. It warrants a whole, whole holiday, in fact. <laughs> now we can look at this and we can get the back of our brush and we can make a little mark like that. And we can start thinking about if you, if you cut, because we're going to put some snow on these little mountains, later on and if you can't think of where these angles are going to be then just just mark them in like this as, as, that's a little tip for you why not why the paint is still wet and you can put some shadows in and a little bit of highlights here and there and if you do that it just makes your life a little bit easier hopefully you can see that so I'm picking up a little bit of burnt umber again just adding it um, adding it a little bit more brown to this particular one and I want to put a I, d I don't want to destroy all my clouds but I want to put another mountain shape in like this and if you have difficulty in painting a mountain shape just basically just let the brush do what it wants there we are we'll come up a little bit there This is another mountain over there we put in, didn't we? We mustn't forget. Sometimes we forget these things and we overpaint them. But they can, it's, it's for, far enough away to... Just a little touch of white. Just to lighten that off. Because we need to get this section further away. From us, so we add a little bit of white to that just to make it look as if it's a bit further away than this bit and, and further away than that bit. But so you've got the distances there, and just get a little bit of this burn damper back in here and then put that in like that. Now let's get a bit of burnt umber, let's get a little bit of black, a little bit of white. Let's add a little bit of contrast here and there, and there and here. There you go. smallest amount of black in the darkness up if you mix burnt umber and um, black together you get something that's very similar to a Van Dyke brown but the good thing is with our teaser they've 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 covered most of their bases so again there if, if you want to draw in some 
areas that you want to put in white then now is the time to do it like that see so but we, we I'm putting in shadows at the moment there you go maybe just a little bit there like that I'm just Taking this down a touch, just get a little bit more black to this. Yeah, but RTs have supplied in that 60 colors. That is, that is a lot, actually. If you think about 60 colors, that is quite a lot. I'm just going to put a, a bit of a foreground focal point there, like that. That's going to block that in. Quite a lovely, smooth type of colour. Again, this is just a block out. So we need just to block that out like that. A bit more brown. Bit of black. Get this nice and black in here. And there we go. An old canvas that I've um, reclaimed and um, as you know if you follow me on a regular basis because I upload every Monday at 7.30 Greenwich Mean Time that is London time and um, if you are not getting um, my videos sent to you then check your notification settings um, for Clive Five Art um, in YouTube and um, you should have notifications and every time I upload uh, a video so but if you're not getting them there's a possibility that those settings have changed for some reason so let's get a little bit of shadow just on this monk then there uh, just a touch let's put a little bit of shadow in there like that very very little paint on my brush I'm, I'm very cautious of this paint because I don't know it and um, I'm just playing around with different methods with the paint because I want to get to know it better and sometimes just do a just do a, a painting and and then see you know the results you're going to get just for fun really just following some lines I'm not using a lot of paint I'm just changing my kitchen roll just going to blend that in quite smoothly like that there we are so we've got some rock type mountain range shapes there like that I'm just gonna put that brush down I'm gonna get a, a small detail brush and then I'm gonna pick up a, um, a short flat as well I'm gonna keep the short flat dry uh, but I'm gonna use this detail brush I'm going into this lighter browny color and now I'm just gonna put in some the marks like this just around and about not thinking too much about it but we want to develop some sort of light and dark contrast on this mountain to make it give it some character and some shape you can see I'm going being quite loose and not putting things in any specific order um, because we want it random um, so we're just building up this just building up this uh, mountain a little bit now and um, there you go well, a bit lighter there Be 
bringing that in. My grandson's out in, uh, out in the backyard playing with Molly, so she might start barking in a second. I haven't taken her for a walk today, so I'm going to have to do that as soon as I finish this mountain scene. Um, because she'll only be nagging me. And she nags me more than the wife. <laughs> she does. Not that the wife marks me much, she doesn't. She's pretty good. She allows me to come into the studio and paint with you on, on a regular basis. So I can't really say nothing, can I? I'm just going to get a bit of white. Don't forget we haven't finished these clouds yet, mind. I'm just going to get a bit of white and I'm just going to touch a bit of snow onto these mountains. We don't want a lot of snow because it hasn't been snowing a lot. But there's a little bit of snow. It gets quite cold up in the old mountains. And air temperature is lower. I've never been to snow down here, but I would imagine it's like this. I don't know. But I said I'm using a, an image royalty free image today so it's nice to do something without after thinking about it there's easier ways to paint mountains I suppose you can use the old Bob Ross technique as well I'm gonna be thinking of maybe doing that um, on another video um, I think that would be good Yes, but well I hope Artie's are like this because um, it must be nice to be able to see um, their paints being used in projects and not just in boxes. I'm just wiping that over with a, with a soft brush just to, just to blend that in. It must be nice for them to um, actually, and, and, and I, do, I do know for a fact that um, these, these videos that are done uh, are watched by them. So um, I'm hoping that um, they'll enjoy this video as much as I'm enjoying painting it and you're enjoying following along. So I'm just going to add a little bit of white. I've darkened this paint again and now I'm going to I'm going to be coming in like this like as if there's another part of that mountain there bringing this down like that leaving a little gap come back up blocking this in we put some mist down there I think yeah put some mist down here now yeah she is she's growling now and they're playing out there there's uh, my little grandson's not well today he's off he's got a ear infection and uh, he suffers really badly with uh, within a year problems and he's he's got um he's got a he's had a, had a grommet removed and now he's got a, a perforated eardrum of him and he's you know he's only he's only seven going on thirty <laughs> there you go so I'm just blocking in this particular I'm just gonna get a little bit of light color just down there just to separate this bottom off because I want to put a bit of mist and stuff in there so if I add a little bit of a lighter color to this now that locked as my my shadow color there we go I just put in some misty 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 there's always mist on mountains there was a little bit of a mist coming in there just playing around with these paints now and just that's coming around that way like that trying to 
I find that lovely type of effect. So we, we want to come around like, like that type of thing. See, that's a good way of doing it, isn't it? So if you're struggling with these angles, then just draw a couple of lines in like that. And then you can just paint up to them. See? Like that. And then this side then, we can get a little bit of that lighter colour and not too much. And we can paint up the line like that. And then we've got that angle that we wanted on our mountain. And add a few different colours in just to give that effect like this. black and brown again I'm just gonna change I'm just gonna sharpen that up there we go so we've got a bit of mountain range starting to come uh, I'm just gonna put my water my water back in my brush <laughs> check in this it is dry at the back of my hand on my finger never touch it like that because you'll get grease spots and that's not really what you want so the, the brush that I put the clouds in originally I'm just going to make sure it's dry and I'm picking up some pure white now taking a little bit off like that and I'm looking into this cloud and I'm trying to and I'm going to try and put some highlights in this cloud now And as I said, don't worry about, you know, you've got, you've got to try and copy some clouds, get some lovely paint photographs of clouds. It doesn't cost anything, does it, to take a photograph of a cloud? And then use those clouds in your painting, and, or just practice painting. If you see a big fluffy cloud like this, then just practice painting that one and, and see what happens to it. You know, this, that's, that's, that's the thing. You don't want a lot of paint on your brush when you're doing this. Let me just get that effect. Just just enjoy the process of painting clouds. Easy way, really, if you think about it. It's, it's such an easy way to do a cloud or something. That it, if you've been struggling, just... I keep saying this. You, you just really have got to practice, 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 practice. You'll never get any better if you don't. We get frustrated and we give up. And that is not... That is not the thing that you should do. You should keep at it. Um... Going back to that story I said about this artist that um, had that stroke and he lost the will to, to paint really because he doesn't think that he can do it anymore. And I thought that when I had my stroke. But it brought me back from the, from the brink because I just painted just for the fun of it rather than try to paint to make money. And if, you, if, you're, if you're a professional artist, it's very difficult if you've got to earn money from doing something like this. Because um, you, you, you lose that ability, I think, in the early stages of strokes and stuff and illness. I'm going to dry this off with the hairdryer. Hope it's dry enough. Picking up our little brush again that we've done the clouds, I'm just going to dry it. 
because I'm putting it in the water, which you shouldn't do really. You should wash them or and, and or lay them flat if you can. You shouldn't leave them standing in water, but I got them standing in a slight angle, so it's not too bad. Um, the reason is that, that happens if you if you put your brushes in water and they go over this bit, the, which is the fell, that's your handle, obviously. Um, that's going to happen, but you can glue them with a bit of PVA glue or something. But that's that's what happens basically. So we, we need to put some mist in now. Same thing. It's just a cloud down here instead of a cloud being in the sky. It's that's all. All all mist is is low level cloud. So if you can paint mist, you can paint clouds. And this could be this could be hundreds and hundreds of feet up up, couldn't it? It could. I like a little bit of canvas coming through. I like that canvas coming through. Let's put a little bit of. Cloud behind that. Mount in there. Like that. It's just sneaking through. bit of mist bit of rolling mist yeah it's been a rolling mist we keep it welcome in the hillside <laughs> short flat bit of white now I'm gonna try and drag my brush down just using the very edge of it trying to get some no effect there like that and use that a bit thicker in places in a second but at the moment I'm just trying to again like lightly 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 drying brush in finding this peak could do this with a palette knife like I said in the old Bob Ross type of style but this is quite effective, especially at a distance. There we go. And too much bright. But you need a little bit of bright. I like that. Let me get some white now. Again, this is just this is snow. So we drag in this across just to give it a little bit of dimension. I'm struggling with the paints a little bit because I'm not used to these paints, but um, I'm getting a result. And if I don't do anything else today, and I get I'm up, happy with the result that I've got, then I'm winning, and that's all that counts, really. Just trying to put some snow patterns in. Like this. I'm using the paint just a little bit thicker now. Just creating a few little dips and tops like that. A little bit of powdery snow here and there, like that. I want to inc 
increase this. I'm just picking up a bit of thicker paint now, just to put a little bit more. Snow in here and there like that. How are we looking? It's looking pretty good, I think. We don't want to go overboard. That's not the key here. The key is to, to play with these paints today. Okay, I'm happy with that so far. What I'm going to do is dry that off again very quickly before I do the last and final bit. Okay, I'm dried it completely 100%. But I'm picking up a little uh, detail brush. There we are. That's uh, number one, I think. I'm picking up some black. A little bit of moisture. And I'm going to paint something here now. I'm going to put... Um, where can I... Uh, let's put him... Let's just put him there. I'm gonna, I am I got a man I'm going to paint. So I'm going to paint a little circle. And then... A line like that and I'm gonna come down with a carrot like that I'm not gonna go all the way down because we got we got a leg coming in there like that I forget this is a little man we've got to try and paint and we got another leg then come in like that. And he's got his arm up. Like that. And his other arm's coming out. And he's looking through a pair of binoculars, I think. Well, he is now. Didn't know he brought binoculars with him, but um, I just informed him as exactly what he has done. And just tightening up a touch. There you go. And a bit of white. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to Put a little bit of white on the back of him like this. We've used all the colours except red. And I'm just aware of that. This is why I'm doing this now. I think we'll get a little bit of this lighty brown colour. And just put a little bit of like that. We could give him a bit of a blue heart. There we are. That's the back of his neck. Quick dry. And now we're going to pick up some red. A little bit of moisture, this red, I think. Quite a nice red. For as reds go, that's quite nice. Put a backpack on him. Like that. A bit of white. So we're going to have to put his... Get a bed roll on his back there like that. There you are. Mix up a little bit of grey. Don't know if you'll see this, but we'll just put a shadow there like that. There you go. 
Should be all right, I think. <laughs> um, so I, I think we're just about coming to an end now. We're just going to put a few little details in, and um, I'm going to put my little birds in because they're eagles, and he's looking through his binoculars and trying to find out what eagles are they? Are they golden eagles or or what? He doesn't know. So that's what he's looking at. So I want to thank Arteza.co.uk, Arteza.com, for giving me the opportunity to produce this video for you. Um, please have a go. All the links in the descriptions um, down there for you. And um, I will leave you with uh, a little look at uh, the finished painting. And don't forget to subscribe. If you would, just click the subscription button. Or if you want to pop along to Patreon and support me, I appreciate that as well. I upload every Monday at 7.30 Greenwich Mean Time, which is London time. So until the next one, thank you, Arteza.co.uk. And um, don't forget, I get a little bit of commission if you do try to um, paint out. So I appreciate that as well. So thank you very much. And I'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.